With the Rookie Season 6 Episode 1, The Rookie is back with more drama, action, humor, and to be honest, and slightly choppy opening. However, the prospect of a fantastic season is readily available. Its comeback is a fitting dedication to the series, combining all the elements we adore and respect about it into the first of two parts. There's never been a show that feels more prepared to generate a season with twice as much content as The Rookie, since they've never shied away from packing a ton of content into a single 45-minute episode. With Season 6, addressing the mystery of Aaron Thorson's whereabouts in the wake of the previous season's conclusion and reigniting the hunt for the person responsible. Additionally, we check in with our favorite pair, Tim Bradford and Lucy Chen, and they are having difficulties in their relationship. Despite internal bleeding, the bullet did not strike any of his essential organs, allowing him to survive. The department as a whole gives him a standing ovation when he returns to work. But Sergeant Wade Gray stops him cold, telling him he won't be able to return to active duty until a psychiatrist clears him. Chen is anxiously attempting to get ready for her upcoming detective exam. Tim offers to take her on patrol with him and proposes that she study for wildcards and try to widen your knowledge base a little by chasing outside the box calls. Chen loses it again in the car, fearing the lieutenant will use mental tricks to trick her into thinking he's asking random questions, while in fact he's asking questions on material she ought to be studying. Chen, however, ruins a wildcard situation at a crime scene when a victim wearing clown makeup is on a lawn and gets wet when the sprinkler system goes off, wiping his face and the evidence area. And off-duty, Wesley informs her that, given the state of the crime scene, obtaining a complete confession from the murderer is the only way to ensure a conviction, provided that she can locate them. She tells Bradford later on in a stakeout that she won't take the test since I know myself. If I take this test and I fail, it will kill my confidence. Chen replies that she's just in a bad place, and he just jumped in to amplify it, in response to his advice to then wait. Then, a few doors down, she sees a woman staring at the murder scene and hurling something into the trash before rushing off. They find her misplaced bracelet and a revolver as they go close to her and search through it. Chen was finally convinced after she confesses to killing the clown man from before. It's still insufficient, though. Bradford disputes her accusations that he undercut her, insisting that all he did was support her choices. Chen is left standing by herself, confused as he says he's exhausted and that they should take the night off before saying something he could regret. As he gets ready for his at-home wedding, Nathan Fillion's character John Nolan had a few near-death experiences during the episode. He nearly died in a fight with the criminals who shot Aaron in the first scene of the episode, gets into another fight in a hospital, and then nearly bites it in the car when a gas tank erupts onto the windshield and a neighboring trolley, almost crushing him to death. He runs across Nyla Harper at the end of his shift, who is still in shock from the execution-style shot she took to save the hospital nurse. She questions why he persists in risking fate while making fun of the curse, which she forewarned him of. Thorson invites Nolan and Bailey Noon to his family's spiritual haven downtown as a token of appreciation for saving his life, after they learn they can't have their wedding at home. In addition, Thorson meets Dr. London, his new psychiatrist, and lustfully looks at her. Thorson appears to be returning to work in a completely different way, and she is fresh to the position. In the end, Boyd, who is believed to be the mastermind behind the professional criminals they have been pursuing, gets shot in the head on his way to prison with a probable life sentence after his lawyer, Monica, makes a dubious call, much like he dispatched his shooters earlier in the episode. 